Hi, and welcome to the End Times. In part three of the continuing series, The Purpose Driven Church, we're going to look at contemporary Christian music. Listed as number one on the list of steps to convert God's church to a purpose driven church on Rick Warren's list is the conversion of old Christian praise music to new contemporary non praise music. Rick considers this contemporary music changeover as a high priority in his steps to converting towards purpose-driven church. The reason being is that he is using contemporary music as bait to lure the youth and others into his purpose-driven church. Why not? It's very clever. Outsiders come in to watch a free rock concert that probably would have costed them upwards of $100 for a similar one elsewhere. The music moves their body and senses but does not do anything for their spirituality. Well, why should it? These people came to church to hear rock music and not to be touched by the Holy Spirit or listen to the Word of God. They saw the opportunity to watch a free concert with very loud music at no monetary cost to them, so they went for it. They were not deceived because a purpose-driven church's goal is to entertain the people and not to help them spiritually. And that's exactly what this movement is doing. The leaders of this movement are making millions of dollars for entertaining people that are bored. So Rick Warren is right when he says, why call it a church? It's not a church, but an entertainment center, or as he would like it to be called, a campus. If you attend a purpose-driven church and previously liked secular Latin music, then you will have a tendency to lean towards so-called Christian music with a Latin flavor. If rock music was your thing, then again, you will lean towards so-called Christian music with a rock beat. If reggae or rap music was your favorite, the same thing applies and so on. A great percentage of the Christian contemporary music contains little to no mentioning of Jesus Christ, or even heaven, redemption from sin, or any meaningful message of salvation, but does contain loud music and the beat that will move many from their seats. These individuals attending these concerts or church performances feel at home because there is no difference between the music played at the purpose-driven church versus the music played at the secular rock concert. The beat, as well as the lighting and dress attire, seems to be identical in both Christian contemporary music and secular music. The only difference is that one of them is called Christian rock, which in actuality is not Christian. A Christian rock singer, in which name I will not mention, was approached a few years ago by one of the fans, or one of the, uh, the fans, and was told the following, Hey, your music is fantastic, but you should ease up just a little with the Jesus lyrics. Now, the person making that comment was he or she attending the Christian concert to hear a message of God's salvation through music? You know what? I don't think so. After watching this video and looking at the hard facts, you may come to either one of the two conclusions. You may either think that I am a bit too old-fashioned and out of time, or you may realize that the church is heading in the wrong direction and needs to get on the right track fast. Someone asked me a while back the following question. They said, isn't it better for a Christian to listen to Christian rock rather than secular rock? Well, guess what? The answer is yes, if there was a difference between the Christian rock and the secular rock. But where's the difference? The word Christian was given to believers of Christ by the unbelieving heathens at Antioch, Rome, back in the Old Testament. And that can be verified also in Acts 21.6. It was because of Christ's like testimony and the difference between them and the secular world that caused the unsaved to call them Christians. These Christians were different in the way they talked, the way they walked, and everything they did. So anything being called Christian from a person to music has to be different from the secular world. Otherwise it can't be called Christian. And if it is, it's false. Then another person asked me, Hey brother, What's wrong with using rock music as a tool to reaching young people? Good question. Well, the answer to this one is very simple. You are using the wrong tool. You're using a screwdriver to hammer in a nail. 
The right tool to use is the one that God commanded and left us to use and follow, which is the Holy Bible, His Word. If anything, whether music, videos, or anything else does not mention, glorify, send the message, or agree with God's Word, then it is a wrong tool and it should not be used. If you look at the book of First of John, chapter 2, verses 15 to 17, God says the following here, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not in the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and lust therefore. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen to that. Am I against Christian music? By no means. I happen to like true Christian music. Music is very important in the spiritual life of a child of God. But the wrong music can spiritually destroy that person. This video is a true warning to the church to turn to God and forget about the worldly riches, lusts, and entertainment that it has to offer. Remember, there are many things that you can do appropriate or inappropriately. No one's going to stop you. The key is not to bring the inappropriate music or things to church where others will be influenced by it and even contaminated. If you decide that Christian contemporary music with no meaningful lyrics is your thing, so be it. But why convince others to go down the same road when you know that this music does nothing to honor and glorify God? The only person happy is you and not God. Jesus spoke of picking up your cross and following Him. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, the Bible teaches that those who live godly in Jesus Christ shall suffer persecution. In other words, the true Christians will suffer persecution. Now guess what? I don't see where the purpose-driven church is suffering any persecution. Besides, why should it? It's making tons of money. Satan only persecutes those who go against him and follow Jesus Christ. And not anyone else. If you would like further information concerning this and other topics, I urge you to peace, please feel free to visit my website at endtimes.us.com. Again, my website is endtimes.us.com. May God bless you. Until next time, Lord willing, and thank you.